Okay, so this video is intended to shed a little bit of light over how this whole system works. As you can see right here, I have a whole bunch of papers with fiduciary markers laid out on them, and uh, I'm projecting a picture from the computer from a projector up here. Up here we have a projector, and right next to it is a little camera that right now has an infrared uh, filter on it. This allows infrared through, but not visible light. Over here, I have uh, LED arrays that are constantly blasting the entire scene with infrared light. You can just barely see them on this camera and they're completely invisible to my eye. That's because this camera uh, has an infrared block filter on it, as to most cameras. Uh, and so, here I have my computer. In the upper section of the screen is what's being projected. In the lower section is a live feed image of what the, uh, the current scene looks like to the camera. See, I can move my legs around and everything. While this appears very dark in the actual image, it appears in broad, well, just bright over here uh, in the infrared image. Um, and that's just because I'm illuminating the scene with the infrared lights instead of the projector, so we don't need to worry about the light that's being projected interfering with the response. Up here is the, uh, the appropriate image that is a forward, no, reverse mapping between the camera and the projector. This entire light blue square is what the camera sees. The square inside of it, the black and red and yellow square, that square is where the camera or where the projector is projecting within the camera's scene, uh, viewing area. As you can see, that kind of lines up with where the, uh, the whiteboard is, and it definitely lines up with uh, where you can see here the outline of where the projector is projecting. If I take a step next, this right here is the, uh, the kind of raw input to the algorithm. It's still doing some basic fiduciary tracking. i take this off and clean this up a little bit. Um, if I take these, I move them around. It's indexing the different things. As you can see, this one right here is 32763, 32, ah, sorry, 761. I just can't really read that one. And, uh, 32573. There's a lot of other activity going on. This is just noise. It kind of gets cleared up by some of the later steps in the algorithm. Next one right here. Actually, I guess it would make more sense if I clear it off. I can show you on here. There is a scene here of the output from the, the actual dots. All of these little green dots indicate areas that might be a fiduciary marker, something that uh, might be a point of interest. And uh, my algorithm uses these in order to figure out exactly where the different things are. So if I move this paper around right here, you can see that the green dots, the, the dots that indicate there might be a point of interest here, move around with it. This here is the output from the, the uh, GLSL shader. As you can see, it highlights all of the points of interest to be very bright so that it knows that, hey, hey, there's something going on here, and that's how I'm able to uh, kind of, this is the output of the shader, it's very fast, this is how I'm able to compute that previous section, the little green dots. This right here is just simply an overlay of what the camera sees in um, infrared. This is one of the ways that uh, you can recalibrate the camera without recalibrating everything. Um, so when you first calibrate the camera, many times you'll kind of knock it off a little bit of alignment. All you have to do is project this image, then make all of the dots line up with the dots again, and everything is back in alignment. Uh, and uh, I believe that's it for this part here. Uh, let's just see real quick if there's anything else. does not look as such. Oh, hey, look at that. Nope, this is good. So, let's get some of the other papers out here. This one right here, and this one happen to track to be certain entities. So, this one right here it has fiduciary markers for being this T2 button. This one right here has them for being T1, 
and this one right here has them for being a keyboard as you can see as I move this around the keyboard moves with it um, and all the way rotation everything else and so if I take that one up there say so I have a little make a little marker here myself as you can see there's a button here as I move this around the button moves with it I can click the button by moving a uh, black thing on top and so that T T1 button changes the background color T2 here if I can hit it there we go changes it back to uh, kind of grayish and I can even type on this nice little keyboard right here not exactly sure what just happened to the camera but um I believe it has to do with the uh, the DLP projection uh, interfering with the camera's time but uh, that is not uh, the actual visual thing that I'm seeing right now. So uh, I guess this has been a brief demonstration, if you want to call it brief, of the system as a whole, and uh, thank you.